Hello, my dears. Hello, lovebirds. Oh, you can't even see all the... Can y'all see the pinned comment fully? Oh, thanks. Hey, y'all. Can y'all see the pinned comment? Uh, and everything. Hello, everyone. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. The ancestors is my doctor. And they write. <laughs> I don't know why I'm singing. It's like I'm tapping with the. Hey, yo! We have to click more, but it's there. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure that the girls can see Courtney's Cash App and my Cash App because we energy exchange. Hello, everyone. Come on in. Come on in. Um, I don't know if Courtney is here yet, but um, when she gets here, I will um, just send a request if you're here. Okay, so today, y'all, I definitely want to do a follow-up. I guess this is kind of like a follow-up to the podcast. Um, I want to talk about Pamela. I want to talk about Pixie Coleman. I want to talk about appropriation in spiritual spaces and, and black fishing. Or even just like POC fishing. I don't know if that's a thing in black spaces. Um, or, I'm sorry, in spiritual spaces. That I think comes up a lot more than we we might be privy to. And just all of the questions and, and weirdness around Pixie Coleman's story. Um, last week, I put out an episode talking about a lot of things. But one of them was uh, Pamela Coleman. Pamela Pixie Coleman. And uplifting her as a black, you know, mystic. And since then... Um, you know, a couple of folks were kind of like, actually, I don't, I don't, she might not be black or we're saying she's not black. So now I think it's important when we get new information or more information that we, uh, that we talk about, <laughs> that we talk about it um, because it's a very interesting, very interesting story. So I'm going to wait for Courtney to get here. Um, and then, and Courtney, if you're here, dust to Onyx, just send a request to join the lab. But yeah, y'all, we just, we just, we love research. We love information. We love getting new information, new ideas, and, and making sure that we incorporate those new ideas in our, in our previous ideas, right? That's how we, that's how we learn. Hold up. This is super, it's getting very bright. Too chat. There we go. Hey, y'all. Okay. How did y'all feel when y'all... Listen, how did y'all feel when you heard the girl might not be black? Like, honestly, I have to say, a part of me was embarrassed. <laughs> like, I was so embarrassed. Um, because I, I research, I provided the links and things that I used and saw uh, for the podcast and people were really excited about it and you know to then just see so much other information about this person that I was like upholding as a black person for her to potentially not even be black like I was just like I have failed <laughs> I have failed as a researcher I have failed and, um, you know, I can say that I, I could have done more research or I could have at least, I will get into it more when I talk to Courtney, but at least uplifted this idea that her being black is, is, is rumored, you know, yeah. I'm not really comfortable saying that she is is black or, or or not black um and i think courtney has kind of like different uh, coming to it from a different viewpoint so i just said it somebody asked where's my twitter i deactivated that's why it's, it's gone for right now um let me one second y'all yeah 
Hold on, y'all. What's that? Here we go. Yay! Let's see. Courtney's here. Y'all, please keep the cash apps. Hey. Hey, y'all. Hey, boo. Hey. Oh, my gosh. I feel so underdressed. Look at you. I got a sweatshirt on. <laughs> you look beautiful. <laughs> Lord, you look so gorgeous. I'm oh, good. good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good too. I'm looking forward to this all day. Yeah. Um, so if y'all don't know, I don't know if you've been under a rock or what's going on, but this is Courtney from Dust to Onyx Tarot Deck, someone who we know is black and bomb and a wonderful artist and illustrator. Um, so Courtney, could you just introduce yourself um a little bit? Just tell the folks who you are. Um, I'm Courtney Alexander. I am creator of Dust to Onyx, a melanated tarot deck, which launched in 2016. Um, it started as a project that, like, I, I just wanted a tarot deck that was created by a Black person. <laughs> Long story short, at the time when I was doing my research, I hadn't found a deck that was created by, you know, a Black person in a handful of, you know, in a handful of decks that were available with Black representation you know, once I realized that there weren't Black creators behind it, it made sense why I wasn't resonating with their right. energy. And so Dust the Onyx came from that desire to have a Black deck made by Black hands. So, right, right. Yeah. Dang. We, love the, we love the deck. And also, you're just an amazing artist overall outside of your, your tarot work. So definitely want to uplift that, too. Um, okay. So the reason we are here today is because, for those of you who don't know, last Wednesday, I put out an episode for Black History Month about Black things. I talked about Calvary shows. I was just talking about different things. But one of the things that I talked about and one of the people that I uplifted was Miss Pamela, Miss Pamela Pixie Coleman. And I've always understood that Pamela Pixie Coleman was a Black person. Um, I never had looked into it. I never studied it. It was just one of the things that you just hear people say like, oh, did you know? And it was just, that was as far as it went. So it wasn't until last week or maybe the week prior that I actually did my own research and like Googled her because I never had before. It's just something that you just hear people say. And so I looked that up. I saw a few things, you know, I saw a couple articles. It was given like Jamaica, you say all this. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, I looked at her picture. She looked... I mean, racially ambiguous, but easy to, if you already have the conception of someone being black, when you see her, you're like, oh, okay, she was like skin or potentially mixed race. And that was some of the information that I saw too. Um, So I put that episode out. I'm like, boom, y'all, this is information that I just learned, sharing it. And then on the post, it was a couple people. I, I wish I could remember the name because we had such a good generative conversation under the post. One of them was Hoodoo Emporium. And they were like, sis, this is a white woman. And I was like, no, because I just read she was black. Well, she was mixed race, at least. I was understanding her as biracial. Right. Like, no, this is her appearance. Da, da, da. And so it took me down this whole, um, I guess, rabbit hole of like wanting to figure out like who this woman is. And I think based on where I've landed now, and I told you this before, like, I feel like I don't know. <laughs> like, I feel right. like, so I'm coming to this conversation really curious. Um, and I saw your post. Someone has sent me your um, TikTok addressing uh, Pamela and her race. And I was like, okay, so it's perfect. Like, we just need to talk about this and like, and, and just talk about, you know, appropriation within this work. Mm -hmm. and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm listening. I'm making a move to my um, office because I think it will be easier to show some of the things because I know we talked about research and pictures and stuff. So I can yes. probably pull some things up on my laptop as we're, we're talking for those who don't have access to, to see. So, okay. Okay, cool. No problem. So when did you first learn about uh, Miss Pixie? I and mean, race aside, like kind of what, what was your first introduction to who she was? It definitely came through my research, um, you know, before coming out with Dust Onyx. Um, mm -hmm. Once I, you know, like I said, I started 
looking up dykes that feature black people and like i said you know i wasn't resonating with all of them and once i started researching creators that's when you know i kind of came across it wasn't like something that i can't remember exactly when but it wasn't exactly something that was quite viral at the time but uh there was definitely some suggestion that she you know was a biracial woman you mm -hmm. know and just the fact that you know learning that the artist behind the writer weight was a woman was still like really cool to learn yeah you know so at the time it wasn't you know like i said it wasn't as viral of like viral information mm -hmm. but i think that as thus the onyx came out and then other black artists began coming forward and stuff i think that it kind of you know became a bigger part of the conversation because mm -hmm. now you know we're we're enter you know black artists are entering the tarot space in a much more visible way right. than prior you know so mm -hmm. yeah it's still uh, like really like really fresh right right mm -hmm. did you i just want to not fully derailed, but you were saying that there were other decks, tarot decks out that uh, at least use black imagery and you did research and you're saying that the people who created these black tarot decks ain't black people? There's some Yeah, like, like for mm -hmm. example, the African American tarot, which, you know, is beautiful artistically. Mm -hmm. But I got that deck and I'm like, none of the historical things mentioned here have any context with the cards. It just felt very manufactured and all they can say, I looked up the artist or uh, creator, and they say the writer is Jamal R. Now, girl, you know that when black folks, when we got our hands in something, we trying to be seen. Okay. <laughs> so, we, we ain't trying to hide behind no pen names. So you could never find out who this Jamal R. person was. And Los Garabeo is an Italian publishing house. They publish a lot of decks. So I honestly believe that they just published this, you know, African, you know, deck and just wanted to give it, give a name that made right. people believe there was a black person connected to it. Someone in the comments just mentioned the ghetto tarot. Yes, ghetto, which, yep, ghetto tarot. Which I, which I had issue with the ghetto tarot and exploitation. Now the artist, amazing, you know what I'm saying? But the fact that there was a white woman from, I think she was from Switzerland or Sweden that, you know, was the photographer behind this project. Right. And there was just a lot of questions around how were these artists being compensated? She started hosting retreats in Haiti once the deck was out and her name became known. She started hosting retreats in Haiti. Just her whole mood and vibe still felt very exploitive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, you don't have the range really to be working with these artists and making sure that you're not only, it's not just the compensation, but you're operating in these spaces in ways that are safe, that are, um, you know, where you're being accountable to, as a white woman with all of this privilege and access. Right. And so I bought this deck secondhand. Do you know, that's usually what I do. Cause sometimes like, I'm like, you know, this, these cars were beautiful. It had actual black people in it. I wanted that right. deck. But right. I was like, I'm finna give, you know, I think her name's Alice Mead or something. It's like, you weren't finna get my money if I wasn't sure that that money was going directly to these artists, you know, that I can't, you, like, at the time, I don't know if it's true now, but there was one point that you couldn't even find their presence online, you know? Mm. So, Ooh. yeah, it's, it's, it's just the way, you know, um, I, think, I think the most authentic one that I found was, um, you know, Forgive me if I'm wrong. I think he was of South Asian descent and he is dark. He's a dark South Asian man and he created the Black Power Tarot that had like a lot of celebrities in it. It was, you know, it's also a beautiful deck. Um, that, but that was, he was like the only person that was close to any sort of semblance of Black. You wow. know, and I don't know if he personally identifies as black or not. That's why I'm, you know, being mindful of how I speak about him. But I think, like he's definitely moving through the world as a brown person, a you know. Person. Right. Yes. So, so I just, um, otherwise, you know, there were no, all the other decks were just kind of diversities for diversity's sake, you know. It's, it's like, you know, making the Barbie doll brown. <laughs> Because the thing. brown was gonna sell money to the brown people, so why not? Right, but with yeah. no other really clear intention um, about what, like, the thing is about the inclusion for inclusion's sake is that when people are not 
of the lived experience, they cannot contextualize your body in the work that they're putting you in. And that's why a lot of times when they try to just change our skin color and put us in place us in these scenes, it doesn't resonate and it doesn't make sense. Right. It wasn't because, created with us in mind. Ever. Right. Right. You know, and, and they're really just so blind and thinking that it's just a matter of skin color, but existence, just the fact that we're existing and being seen and um, in this present, like our body is a language, you know? Right. Right. I'm sorry, I have a cat and she's like really needy. Oh, <laughs> so no, it's like, no problem. So my cat's going to talk to you at some point. It's, it's fine. It's cat friendly. Um, and also, I just want to say, like, the ghetto tarot, the name of it always has bothered me. But anyway, I'm not going to sit on that too much. But I'm like, right. why did you? Okay. Anywho, so, Miss Pam, what do we know? about her what do we know so off off the top of my head and what i do know personally is that like um i'm gonna let me let me pull this stuff right quick right quick i was like a little little stuff we know she went by pixie (laughs) yeah um okay so yeah so while i'm looking this up so her father was Charles Edward Smith, and from what I understand, he was like a businessman, mm-hmm. and um, you Very know they businessman. Yes, because his his father was um, the mayor of Brooklyn and eventually became a senator. Yeah, and mm-hmm. so um, so yeah, like he ended up working in Jamaica for this company. He, he moved his family to Jamaica when she was pretty young. His, her mother, um, Corinne Coleman. Yes. Is from her family's roots can be traced back through Massachusetts, back to the like some of the earlier settlers. Like yes. that's how far they're able to trace back, and they show like um, I want to really be able to show people here the picture. Um, so give me just a moment here while I while I'm trying to pull that up. Yeah. But, um. But, yeah. So don't yeah, you don't so, know, this is. It's happening like she was born in 1878 so um just giving context of kind of what <laughs> the world was potentially like in 1878 um, right and when you see pictures of her mother are you because you know the thing what that i think kind of threw people off is that like she definitely and i understand completely why people um believe that she's biracial and i'm not you know, doubting that there may be some some mixing in her bloodline, but in terms of who her immediate parents were, you know, like when I look at her mother, I see now some of her features, you know, so I'm going to turn oh, the camera yeah. around. Yeah. So sorry. So you see her mother. Oh, uh-huh. And when you see, um, let me see. Loki, I mean, she's she's giving me white woman, but I can't, I can't. But, yeah, because like when you see uh, Pamela's um, photo, I'll pu- I'll pull up her photo. Um, like she has like her mother's nose and stuff. I think there are some features that come through. Um, yeah. Her lips are a little fuller, but like when I see her right here, she actually looks pretty much like her mom. Yeah, she does look like her. She looks like her mom. And I think that, you know, genetics-wise, she came out ambiguous enough that as she got older, people began to question. And, you know, the thing about being an artist, she was queer. She was running in these occult circles and stuff. So she loved using that ambiguity. You know, right. it gave her mystery. It, and ideally, too, I'm, it, and I wonder what happened I don't know a lot about like her history and relationship with her family. Like her, um, she's not the only artist. Her mom's brother, Samuel Coleman, was a famous watercolorist. So, mm-hmm. you know, she grew up, you know, and, and had like, you know, artists in her own family. But like, I know they talked a lot about her dying poor and stuff like that. And maybe something happened once her parents revived that she didn't inherit the 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 oh, fun, yeah. the money mm-hmm. and everything or, or the support. But I can imagine that initially, at least growing up wealthy and having access and all this stuff, you wanted to go into occult spaces with kind of like free spirited, sometimes poor, you know, um, what you call, think were hippie people in your mind, you know, I can see her wanting to move through these spaces, not really wanting to give, and I'm, this is just assumption on my part, 
Yeah. But maybe not one to give away her identity as like this, you know, kind of privileged white girl. Right. Grew up with money and access. No, you know, you want to be in this space and be a mystery and no one knows who you are. And you're doing all of this exotic work, you know, mm -hmm. based on what you learned about Jamaican culture and um, history and folk tales and mm -hmm. all this other stuff she was fascinated with. And, you know, um, people would ask, are you Asian? Am I? You know, like she, that's why I, <laughs> I honestly, it's, she never quite claimed anything. So I know I, I kind of called her a dolezal and everything. She never adamantly claimed any claimed um any identity. Yeah, she did. She Down never, to but, like sexuality, like she was mm -hmm. very mysterious in all forms of her being mm -hmm. and what she right. was. Absolutely. Right. Right. She really, she really was. Um and, and, and oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was and you know, none of this is surprising. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But my, my question became is why, where did the rumor of her being, I, th I think part of the rumor what? of her being Black came because her mother died in Jamaica and there was an assumption that her mother was Jamaican. Because when I first looked her up, oh, her, like her mother was this mystery woman of Jamaican descent. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. yes, so we I kinda, saw that. So we kind of told ourselves like, oh, she, you know, just happened to, um, you know, maybe, you know, her mother um like no one would else but because you know how it was like you know we weren't being documented and shit so right. you know like yeah mom was you know a secret or you know this woman that we couldn't find any information about and i think that made it easier to spread that she was of jamaican descent and then until i found out about who her mother really was and it's like oh right. that's the difference i also <laughs> think based on my research that because she didn't speak a lot about her identity any really of her identities at all that there was just a lot of speculation even while she was alive of, mm -hmm. now what is she even outside of her mother dying in jamaica but i saw it was an account from one of her close friends who didn't know what she, she was and actually said that she was Jap uh, thought that she was japanese so it's like she really was like and there yeah. was because she operated the world as an other and she performed very she seemed very eccentric and she wore clothes that she wore clothes that were eccentric. She almost performed as a folktale person. Like she wore Jamaican like she 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 dressed up in that way. So I think mm -hmm. especially being around a lot of white folks and being a, around a lot of elite white folks, there's it's like maybe she can't can she be white and do this and so i i know that so that it also could have just come from that because i think the people that she was around also were like well no she's japanese because i saw her wear a kimono that's an account that yeah. I read. and um, we see white people do it today when we think about new age circles as soon as soon as they come out with a new sense like like spiritual system or something their name always changes to an ethnic name <laughs> like it ain't never just billy billy bob williams <laughs> you know <laughs> out here being a shaman they right. always take on the names <laughs> from non-european cultures because it feeds the mysticism it feeds right. that 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 idea of the otherness that especially to run in these spaces and the veto calling you i can imagine just going around telling stories during readings really being this artists and entertainer all these other things mixed in that yeah you know like being little sarah, sarah sue they ain't gonna be running to go get a reading from you you know right, right. <laughs> so, um, so i absolutely right. imagine her doing that i think and that's real that's real as hell um i've also been thinking about and i was trying to research but i was like oh that's so deep but like what I guess racial and this is anything for you to answer but this is what I think about like what was race like in 1878 like what I mean we knew people was black and niggas were niggas but like what were people being called like was this the mulatto era was this the like mm. I was just thinking of even blackness were people calling themselves black at all in 1878 like I don't know when that mm. racialization um, moment or when it became defined very clearly and I know people know this who study this I just don't know I've just been thinking about like what was race at that time what was race in Britain in a, in the 1800s like I yeah. don't know it's just something else that um, just pops in my head and just the thing yeah I'm definitely no art historian I'm, I'm horrible with you know like 
um like little facts and years and shit but yeah. <laughs> in general Same. i what i what i remember learning i know by that time you know the categorization race like phenotypical categorization of race was already a thing by that time mm. you know by um the late um yeah. yeah late 1800s but yeah i you know i think that's a good question because were we still identifying ourselves how were we identifying ourselves or at least you know like you said mulatto like you know that that would still shed some light on that time mm -hmm. um because like i said like at the end of the day she herself never said anything about being she like she really she really just moving through the world like enjoying her otherness and keeping the mystery about it it was us or or like at least you know us in here in modern times that all of a sudden put this identity on her and so the question really is why do we need someone someone in my i wish i could remember and speak their name but we had the discussion but why do we need a poster child when we know that everything comes from us you know say why why do we need a poster child in tarot because i feel like the 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 quickness with which we like kind of latched onto that as just like a fact mm -hmm. um and is because sometimes like yeah we we have conversations about gatekeeping and stuff for sure and we understand that there's such a range of blackness and how blackness shows up so i think it was easy for us not to question but why do we need a poster child and if pamela coleman smith ain't it for us why can't that just be okay because we have still legitimate black artists myself mm -hmm. and others you know that have created decks and we we have a whole ancient history of divination we can read anything Mm -hmm. anti thing you know so we don't need proof that somehow we were a part of tarot specifically when we are the mother of it all like, right right you know and that's such a great so, point that's such a great point we don't have to we don't have to prove that we start oh well, see we black folks touched this thing too like what you mean we touched it we didn't create it and birthed all of all the most of, of this spiritual shit um if yeah honest, i think yeah. it's I think, and I'm not a tarot girl, so as someone who witnesses and knows people who practice tarot, I guess it seems like tarot, well, I mean, tarot feels white to people, you know, tarot mm -hmm. feels white to people, I think, even black people who are trying to get into tarot, who reach out to me, and I'm like, well, I ain't the one because I don't practice tarot, but they'll say, like, is this for me? Because everything feels very white um in it and so to me it makes sense why at least in the tarot community people would want to latch onto something like that because in these spiritual spaces they can they're all they're so often white i mean hoodoo has been right. white <laughs> like until within the past three to four years maybe you can google hoodoo and actually see black faces come up um and so mm -hmm. i think the tarot in its own way is is in that space but and moving out of that space thankfully but i think right. it makes sense um yeah it makes sense yeah like we you know especially because like for example with card amassing and using playing cards i think sometimes that's that can be a little more intimidating and it depends on how we mm -hmm. work intuitively ourselves um you know and natural like even i'm a person that's drawn more to illustrations than sometimes it's because i'm already very cerebral so yeah. like and i and i enjoy astrology and all of those systems that get my mind going but when it comes to connected intuition sometimes i need something that can take me out of it so i prefer like the illustrative tarot over the traditional kind yeah. of card playing like tarot like the marseille decks and the previous one before because that's what they really look like we're more like playing cards with pips and everything versus what we understand like now with the writer ways weight and even talk they were doing a new thing by creating right. these illustrations with the tarot um tarot decks right. at the time that they created them right right <sighs> this is it's so interesting to me and i don't have any um connection to whether pixie's black white had a drop no drop was adopted could was was white like i have no it's not that I don't care, but what I think is very interesting is just that all of this conversation, all of this obscurity, all of this unknown, all of this, like you're talking about the wanting to latch on to people like this, like what it, like that is the part that really interests me. That's the part that I'm really curious about. Her dying so poor, like it's just, I like, I wish someone did like, had the money to really like, <laughs> Get into yeah, this people have tried to write and stuff. Yeah, I know there's been like 
you know, different things written about her. But yeah, it's just so interesting. I can imagine, though, like with her, you know, with her being so affluent that there's probably a lot that she gave up in order to embrace her life of freedom. And especially mm -hmm. at 1878 when, you know, women in general didn't have rights and all this other stuff, you know, like, she and popped, you're a mystic, uh, and you know she had particular mental health stuff that was going on. Yeah, and your and your family are straight wasps, real white Protestant <laughs> folks. You yeah. know, and you're out here calling yourself, you know, conjuring up, you know, um, whoever to talk and speak the spirits and stuff. They probably went, it was like nah, 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 nah. Yeah, and <laughs> like yeah, they. I'm right. gonna be surprised if she got cut off. Right. Well, that's true, too. And I mean, like you said before, at this age, women, regardless, you know, was, weren't getting <laughs> they shit like they weren't. There's not going to be a lot of information probably about women from that time mm -hmm. period, or particularly women who were like what, doing what she was doing um, and, and moving in the circles that she was these weird mystic circles that she was in. Not to call it weird, but yeah. Um, it was something else I wanted to Oh, it also reminded me of the story of Tituba, um, which, for folks who don't know, is a witch that was a well, witch, mystic, whatever, who was tried in Salem during the witch hunts. And she's also someone that people name as Black. Um, and when I did my research on Tituba before, I've come to the conclusion that she's Black. But again, this is one of those things where it's like people don't know because I've also read that she was mediterranean i read that she was uh brown um like a mm -hmm. brown Indian person from not trinidad um but from the caribbean what you i don't remember so it's just like and, and a lot of black fo uh, folks and i know a lot of black women claim to to the as being black and i think that i have just be I don't know. It just brings up all this stuff about like we are grasping for so much, trying to see ourselves in the stories, trying to see if we were attached to terror at all, trying to see if how did the Salem witch trials impact black bodies and black mm -hmm. people. Um, and that's not to say that we aren't in it or, or, or weren't, but there are also examples and like what you were saying, where it's very clear that there was a black person here and it wasn't about guessing if the person is black right. or not. Like, and, right. Yeah. No, and it's and it's important that we 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 talk about this for this reason because it's like, you know, um, for for me, you know, I understand there's controversy around people. People have their strong feelings about gatekeeping blackness. For me, you know, I understand blackness like like so black culture is not synonymous with being black phenotypically mm -hmm. and i think people get the two confused you know so can you, someone, into, can you talk about that so i i personally i personally for example i love using rashida jones quincy jones daughter is this example she you know is someone who is of african descent you know what i'm saying she she got a black ass daddy that we all know <laughs> you right. know very famous and can't deny <laughs> but deny. rashida jones is a white woman to me you can't tell me no different because if you ain't know who Rashida Jones daddy was Rashida Jones li like literally can move through this world as a white woman not a kind of white woman not a maybe white woman but straight up white woman right. Rashida Jones can move and, and for a long time Rashida Jones did move as a white woman until it benefited her to come out right as a biracial and now don't get me wrong i don't just judge this on like lightness because we, we have you know lighter skinned black people who are still very visibly phenotypically black they have very um african features that still like they can't deny sure that they're of african descent but i'm talking specifically about white passing people who like literally can pass off as like white european folks and with, you know, yeah and and then and i actually just read an article the, today about um, a biracial woman who, um, you know, similar to Rashida Jones, it's like, well, she was, I think she was adopted. Her, she was adopted, and then her, um, her parents were doing like a lot of transracial adoption, and she was amongst them. And so, for a long time, even though she claimed that her parents were so woke and anti racism and stuff, which I honestly personally don't, mm -hmm. because she grew up with so much disdain for her own blackness. 
So they couldn't have been that anti-racist if you were still struggling so hard. But still, that's just my opinion, you know. Right. But she started straightening her. She said she got picked on one time by these white boys, and she started straightening her hair because she tried to go off to college and, like, wear a fro. And then they said something about it. So she started straightening her hair and really leaning into whiteness, only had white friends, only hung out with white people, presenting herself as white. And now she feels safe to come out as black now and embrace. And I'm not trying to like downplay the you, the specific journey for biracial people. They absolutely have their own journey. They have their own pains and struggles of being biracial. But I think it's disingenuous to be able to pass off as white and to cloak yourself in whiteness for your own survival and safety and to partake in, partake in the anti-blackness that that requires you to do so, then to take that mask off and be like, I'm home. And then also want to take center stage and all of the narratives and the stories and the the um all of the things that we're talking about. Also want to be heard. Like go ahead and come out. Like that's a part of your you finding your identity, but sure. still also know you still also be mindful of your place and how you're not just coming up in here and taking up space because you ain't doing nothing but doing the same thing you were doing before. In that case, and using your you went from your white privilege to your light privilege you to, to still just... be able to take up space no matter where you go. Right. And that's not cool, you know. And so, um, I like I said, sometimes it's a challenging conversation to have because some people feel like you're trying to like downplay their existence or like you're not like we're being understanding. But it's a it's a balance between recognizing your personal struggles and also recognizing how those things still play out right. in this shared reality space that we're in right. and being responsible and aware and what that looks like, you right. know, right. and that we all have a duty in whatever intersections we we move mm -hmm. in. To, mm -hmm. to do so, you know, so okay. sorry. That was <laughs> no, no, this is good. I mean, race, racial conversations are so good. They're so interesting because it's all, I mean, it's, it's, it's so complex. Like it's so many layers to it. It's so many conversations around it. There's, you know, how do we understand black folk who pass? Like, what does it mean? Like, are you black if you walk around and, and portray yourself as white or, or, or when, or are you black? But when you go home, everyone around, all the black people know that you're black. So are you are having a black experience, maybe. But are you just going to be around white people? Like, which it seems like right. it was, you know. And I don't think there was never a going home to my community, even if as a passenger. Right. It seemed like that, you were always I white. I was like, you hung around, like, white occult niggas. White men. <laughs> and they like you. You were, you were, you were. Right. You, you were. Right. <laughs> You was and you was too black. <laughs> that's how. Like that's you were around white men. Like, mm -mm. No, they ain't right. right with me. Right. It reminds me. I just also thought of um Nicole Richie. Like mm -hmm. I always thought Nicole. I didn't even realize Nicole Richie was Lionel Richie's daughter until way. Like, I thought that was just a white woman. Well, I mean, she's a white woman. Um, yeah. But and it's always just like. And I mean, this is going by the definition of the, those who created the this categorization of race they were going right. off the of type now over time like i said black and like the language of like black versus african-american that became a thing but when we're talking about designation of race phenotypically we're going off of their definitions about presentation mm -hmm. you know and then somehow like the, the, even they want to like you know fudge it when it's convenient for them you know like but Oh, she's adopted, y'all? Yeah. Oh, my bad. Apparently, she was a Who's adopted. adopted. I think oh, man. I didn't know oh, she was. I didn't know that. See, y'all telling me. Um, So, I don't know if there's anything else you all want to, uh, or you want to say, Um, or I'm just going to look at the comments. I don't know if y'all have any particular questions, because we're going to wrap up um, the next 15 or so. But, um. Yeah, this is all interesting. And again, like, I want to just notate that on the last podcast episode, I was saying that this was a black, you know, biracial woman, and I'm like retracting that. <laughs> like, so this is the follow. Like, I'm retracting that. Um, and again, I don't feel it's necessary for me to say that she was white or black. I I'm just sort of like, eh, I don't know. So. I'm a just, but I'm very comfortable saying I'm not comfortable calling her black. I'm very comfortable right. saying that um, because it's just, it's just a lot for me and, and race conversations are a lot. And um, 
we know she was around white folks. We know that her parents, whether, you know, there, there are things that say she could have been adopted. There are things that, that there, are, there are things out there. There are rumors. Um, but we know that she took up space and resided with white people. Um, right. who were very rich, who had a lot of power um, and pretty much, you know, did what they did. And, and she did that until she decided not to and left and created another, a, a different identity for herself, regardless mm -hmm. of why people could say that it's because she was half Jamaican and she want, you know, like for me, it's like we, or I don't know. So I just want to say that I don't know. Um, and, and also just being mindful of how we put people in categories that they didn't put themselves in um, as yeah. well. Because I was, yeah. I was reading somewhere that they actually called Pixie non-binary. And I don't, I'm not here to say whether it's right or wrong, but it's like- But that was, we didn't have to have the language for gender as non-binary at the time, so. Right. Like, um, yeah. We can't necessarily put her in a box of being non-binary because um, she was never married, you know, yeah. or because she lived with a woman for 20 years and the little bit of things that she did have when she died, she gave, gave to that woman because we can also know that it wasn't uncommon for women to live together um, back in the day, you know, uh, because right. they, if they didn't have a husband. They needed to each other <laughs> to take care of each other. Go ahead. I want to address a couple of comments um, that came up before I forget. So um, someone, excuse me if I, uh, forgive me if I pronounce your screen name wrong, but I believe it's Tavi is um, asking about where um, biracial people are placed. Um, you know, that's a slippery slope because I am not, you know, Lord and God over the black gate, you know. <laughs> You're not. And, 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 I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> These are just, you know, my opinions, you know, um, on, you know, being black. And overall, like I said, you know, I ultimately judge blackness by phenotype. You know, like I said, I see a difference between a claiming of African descent and black culture. Because, like, you could, like, you may be born biracial and have all the white passing privilege, but still you got black parents, you grew up in black culture, you know, and it's like, I'm not. No one's trying to take that away from you, but to go to to know that you actually have the privilege in how you look to go into the white world and be able to literally put all of that behind you if you wanted to for the sake of survival is a privilege you need to recognize and own and and not see it as something like no one's like coming for biracial people when we have when, when we are saying like, hey, you know, be conscious and aware and own that. And know that that's going to affect how you are also perceiving other black people and how you're moving through spaces and how you may perpetuate anti-blackness and how you may um, use your use that privilege and um, or sometimes how that privilege affects how you even move through black spaces. And you may not automatically be, cons be considered a safe person or none of these things, depending on the people you're around. You got to me, it's an awareness more so than, uh, you know, what what I should tell you to call yourself. You know, mm. um, because we also know there's some white passing people who very consciously chose to claim and use and live in their blackness, despite yes. the fact that they knew that it would cause them more harm and more discrimination and more hardship to do so. They made a conscious decision to do that. Mm -hmm. So that that is the awareness and the owning of their identity that, you know, we're talking about here to right. me personally. Right. right. And yeah, I th and I think that that makes sense too. There is a there is something in actually claiming blackness for yourself. Like there is something in actually naming and saying that you're black, regardless of like you said, if you pass or whatever. Like if you don't say that you're black, I mean, there's a lot of black people that look like you and I who don't claim blackness. And so like right. we can't call them black, but there still is something in saying like, oh no, I recognize that I am black. And those people who walk around who look like us who don't claim black were like. So why you don't play? like? Yeah, I but okay. <laughs> so there's a thing. There's that's real. Um, Haitian flag emoji. Are you Juju? Are you hesitant planning not planning on adjusting the last episode? No, I'm definitely leaving the last episode up. Um, and then next episode, I'm gonna refer people to this conversation and and uh, briefly kind of discuss like, hey y'all, I said she was black and baby is giving. <laughs> <laughs> it's not giving so yeah um this is kind of like my follow-up conversation um that i just i just wanted to engage with other people 
um, Jewel, naming and saying it all the time, not just for February or around Black people, right? And, and uh, you said this earlier when we were on the phone, like, you know, it's Black History Month. We don't have to uplift Black people who ain't calling themselves Black, even if they were Black. Like or Exactly. Like, Somebody like, said they may not know if they're Black. If you go through the world not knowing if you're Black, because <laughs> if you're Black, you wouldn't know. If you're Black, you're Black. The world, the world wouldn't let you forget right. that which is the point, you know what I'm saying? And right. like, you know, we can, yeah, like, I think, you know, people, someone mentioned a poll, people will choose how they want to react because honestly, it's very reflective of Pamela's life, right? Pamela decided to be a mirror and she said, I am whoever you say I am. And people can continue in that same energy, even at her death. But for this good Black History Month, where we're celebrating Blackness and Black people, we are celebrating people who claim and know and own and that own blackness, brand. you know. And, and I, I, for for me, it's like any other time of the year. Hey, let's go for it. But yeah, I don't. I personally made my PSA because I don't believe that Pamela Coleman Smith deserves to be listed under, you know, as anyone honored during Black History Month. You know, I, I that agree. was my whole point. I agree. I agree with you. And that's why I'm like, ooh, I'm retracting because that's real. And that once I saw that she what she was whatever people said she was, I was like, oh. <laughs> so regardless yeah. of she was, like, oh, okay, Pixie. Um, so while we're here, before we wrap up, is there anyone um, that you want to uplift, whether yourself or just other artists, other spiritual workers who are Black, um, particularly outside of Pamela Coleman? So, um, as far as immediate artists, um, I just got a wonderful plate made by Nakia Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, like, she made me this beautiful ancestral divination plate. She's um, a young artist and a ceramics artist and, like, very, very beautiful work. Um, I wish that I had her, um, her info up. But I'm gonna spell her name yes, on please. paper for y'all. I don't. I hope. I hope the thing is in reverse. But or you know, comments, comments. What am I? Comments. So um, I, I really just want to uplift her because I um, absolutely just love you know my plate and she sat down and you know we connected with my ancestors and you know everything to to get this custom plate. And I think that it's beautiful to, like, have artisans like her, young artisans coming up, making tools for us to connect to our ancestors, for sure. Yeah. Um, so I just want to uplift her. Mm -hmm. um, I know this is, like, <laughs> okay, y'all, I know this is not, like, spiritual related, but I'm really into anime. And I absolutely fell in love with this um, young young Black sister who makes these anime um theme bonnets called the bonnet box so now i have like a sailor moon bonnet yeah. i have a favorite bonnet from hunter x hunter and she hand makes them and when i tell you them bonnets don't move them bonnets don't move so yes so yeah and um if you're looking for something luxurious another business that i supported was a um a young man in la he makes these robes daddy's robes and when i tell you that thing is like a like it's like a thick comforter, Ooh. thick furry comforter, but like a robe. <laughs> and you can wear it like 30 degree weather. It's is it's crazy. But yeah. So those those are some um black Thank businesses you. that I um have definitely supported in in the past month. Um mm -hmm. so yeah. Yay. I'm gonna shout out, of course, you. Um I use when I pull cards, I'm typically either pulling from um the Anadinkra deck by Simone Breziando, Rest in Power, or or your cards. I just got the Grandma Babies Apothecary uh deck. They're like kind of playing cards. Yes, I love Look, that deck. Um I just got it. So I'm excited to I haven't divined with it yet. Uh I wanna I really I really want to post about this amazing man, Amir Bay, because people don't know, but a black man came out with a deck in the early nineties. And I've been I've met him in person. Like, look at this man. Doesn't he look like magic? Yes. It's giving conjure. <laughs> yes, the African Equinox Celebration Tarot. And these are all based like this is the guidebook, but his decks, they're all based on sculptures that he made. Wow. Ooh. 
Wow. So, yeah. What's the name of that? The Equinox Celebration Tarot. And so I really have, um, you know, um, loved having his work and stuff. And I, I happened to find his deck on eBay years ago, right before Dust Onyx came out. Mm -hmm. And um, I had the privilege of meeting him last year, finally, just... Oh, nice. You know, spirit, just meeting the right person who knew him and stuff. And he gave me a tea reading. Oh, amazing, amazing artist and person. I mean, he does these big old giant metal astrology charts. Like, he's he's just literally, like, yeah, magic personified. So um, I definitely want to do a post and stuff and show more of his cars and everything. I know I've been kind of in my cave and not on social media lately because last year was just a lot and I decided to pull back. But, you know, I'm slowly, slowly making my way out. <laughs> I appreciate it. And as you slowly are coming out that you join, join the lab. Yes. And I'm putting up, someone asked me for the bonnet box link, so I'm putting that in the comments too. Okay, cool. Um, I'm trying to make note of it. Maybe I can like it out. the Equinox Celebration is Tarot is the name of the deck by Amir Bay. Yeah, okay, cool. And then the bonnets person, the bonnetbox.com. Oh, bonnet box. Okay. Can I? Can I? I'm gonna go. Hold on. Give me like literally two seconds. I'm gonna run. No problem. Them. Go ahead. Go ahead. I hope y'all see my boots. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Christelle. Um, just making sure there's any questions that I may embarrass. No, okay. So, she first of all, she delivers them in this adorable bento box. Okay, they come, cute. come in the bento box. I was like, girl, if you don't work that packaging, I'm going to do the packaging. Yeah. So, so yeah, I got my Sailor Moon. Cute. <laughs> so Sailor Moon. And some of them are just prints inspired by like certain characters. So, mm -hmm. you know, Katsuki grew from like Naruto. This, you know, one of my faves. I love Gone. And like I said, they are really good Ooh, quality. I love the stretch. Oh yeah, they stretch. They go big. And when I tell you, girl, don't move. Do not move. Oh, that's a bump. Uh, and I, I mean, double, and I need one. double layered, so they're reversible, you know, like thick, nice stretch. Oh, baby. What? Look, show, showing out. That's... I'm going like, outside I with that bonnet on. I be, I be wearing my bonnet in public, okay? Yes. I be, I be like, look. Yeah, it's the stretch. It's the the elasticity for me. <laughs> yeah, no, because I can easily fit so much of my hair. Wow. But yeah, and she, and she actually makes the long ones for like if you have long braids uh -huh. or locks, she makes the long ones too. So please support that this sister box. who who okay. out here coming out revolutionizing. <laughs> okay, so you can just put us on to bonnets, <laughs> decks, like. All the yeah. I'm so appreciative of you. This was such a good conversation. Um, yes, thank you for having me. Of course, it just only made it just really only made sense. Okay, so who's a demon slayer? Okay, come on, you know you know what it is. Okay, <laughs> right. I yes. got excited. Shout out to the animes. <laughs> yes. Um. So yeah, I think that's it, y'all. I'm gonna keep this live. I'm gonna put it on my page. Um. And, you know, direct people here once I put out the next podcast episode. I'm just so happy we were able to talk about this. Uh, talk about Miss Pex and her her ass and just and, and the appropriation in the spiritual community before. But again, y'all, like, we have people to support. We have Black yeah. people who know that they are Black, who claim that they are Black, who move in Blackness in this work. This work comes from Blackness. So, yeah. <laughs> like, we don't have to scrounge and scrape to try to insert ourselves in something that we are already we don't we don't have to insert we are it right we already got it we already made it we already been we already it made it did it done yes it, doing it all, of it all of it so thank you so much i appreciate you oh yeah yo our cash apps 
please hit up oh. Courtney Alexander's Cash App. It is in the pinned comments. I always say energy exchange is just that's what we do around here. Like, you know, it's 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 time, it's labor. We pay people because we love people and we respect people um who, who put our time and share our energy and time with us. So please hit up the Cash App. There's also Venmo there as well. Um dollar sign dust the number two O N Y X Onyx and then dust to Onyx on Venmo if you have that. And if you want to show me love too, dollar sign it's Juju Baby. Y'all know the cash in because I'm telling you all the time. So we'll see you. Yes. Thank you, dude. Yes, Bye. thank you. See you later. Thank you. Y'all have a good one. Bye. Yeah. Thank y'all for coming. This was so good. So again. Appreciate y'all for coming. Thank y'all for this conversation. Thank y'all for your wonderful questions and listening. Um, I love opportunities to continue to grow and learn and ask questions and retract statements. Like that's the power of this. You know, when we get information, you put it out there. And then when you get more information, you adjust, you know, and you reflect and you bring on people who, who may know more or whose viewpoints that you respect. And so I'm doing that. So tell people, leave people over here. All of y'all on Twitter, since I'm not on Twitter, guide people, you know, to this conversation um, about about Miss Picks. And we're just gonna keep learning and growing and editing and changing and putting out more content together. So I appreciate y'all so much. Later.